Good morning, folks. We're starting today watching a phalanx of plasma filaments say goodbye as they dance over the western limb towards the far side of our star. Space weather conditions are neither quiet nor scary at the moment. We've got news across the world, a bit up at the moon, and some in the realm of the new electric universe theories. But we're beginning, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding a lack of activity, dark coronal holes turning around, but we've got no sunspots, and because of that, no solar flares either. The solar wind remains intensified, however, due to the coronal hole stream. It's settled down now and steadies as Earth's magnetic shield is handling the impacts nicely. The impact in coronal hole is turning away, while the southern trailing equatorial opening will face Earth this weekend. We've got an earthquake warning set for now as well. Top rumbles of the last day were in Canada. Not just one, but a couple. That region was actually under a magnitude 5 watch per the alert maps. Nothing scary, but not exactly a regular magnitude occurrence up there. News beneath our feet as well as Turrialba and Costa Rica underwent intensification and major ash releases. You might remember the volcano alert for this region. It is ongoing through the week. Ash obscures the view of the mountain there. Up next, we're coming to the moon where the solar wind soil sparking story has gotten a boost as the permanently shadowed craters get mapped in amazing detail. They exist because unlike Earth, which is angled compared to the sun, the moon is almost polar parallel with our star, which means regions of the poles are constantly in the dark, as opposed to getting a summer and winter like on Earth. The mapping is fantastic, but not as relevant for our community as the crater spark blast hypothesis NASA is offering, which sounds like something you'd hear at an electric unit. Universe Conference. Hold that thought. Snow is causing major havoc across the United States, but in Pakistan, it's taking out homes. People in the north are in some big trouble right now. We also saw a snowstorm cause glitches and a shutdown at a Romanian nuclear plant. To the northwest of that, there was major flooding. Northern coast took a storm surge that left basements and streets flooded. Could have been worse, though. The current monsoon shift is not what Thailand wants to see. The death toll is climbing after torrential downpours have inundated the area. Well, I told you to hold that thought. That's me at last summer's Electric Universe Conference. The video is available on the Thunderbolts Project's YouTube page. The goal was to set the stage for the layman. While the physicists will push their front line, a door has opened to the rest of the world, and all you need to find it is your eyes. Go check out that video, folks. And also, the Disaster Prediction app is starting to make news around the country. These two were Kickstarter founders and rightfully were able to claim that in the article. If you want to help spread the word as a founding member of the app, send us an email to cat at observatoryproject.com. We'll get you some talking points, make it super easy for you. Of course, the app itself is available worldwide on Apple and Android. If you have trouble finding it in your app store, go to any of our websites, find the links directly to the download page. We've got pressure and radar forecasts, followed by shots of our star to close. That monsoon shift we mentioned earlier is the type of thing expected during the transition to solar minimum. I'm guessing you all know where you can find out more about that. And dear Japan, don't you dare rumble until I analyze your signals a bit more. It's 4.35 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.